<laughs> Hi, my name is Ben. Hello and welcome to the Micro Soldering Show. And today we just start by an iPhone 7 Plus, Plus which was mailed in because it's uh, got 12 volts directly into the lightning. And after that, the, the screen was getting green. The screen was getting green and nothing worked at all. In this case, I just really have to say that I want to swap the board because it doesn't make any sense if you got an iPhone which got uh, too much voltage. Um, it's, it doesn't make any sense to repair that board. Or what would you say, Ilya? Me? Yeah. Uh, I didn't hear anything you were saying. Like, I, I, I was saying when an iPhone got too much voltage, like 12 volt. Yeah. I won't repair the board, I just swap it. Because it's a never ending story. I have no idea what's when, you, when, you, when you start fixing that, you go from one point to the other, to the other, to the other, and at the end, problem. yeah, and at the end you say, oh, I swapped the board. So I will directly do that, because it really doesn't make any sense for me. Considering how quickly you do that, that makes a lot of sense. Yeah. Let's see. Um, oh, the battery doesn't look good at all. I think uh, it was um, just a second before exploding. And I don't want to, to use DC power supply at this device now and don't give any voltage in the board. I just want to swap the board fast to get the important data because the customer doesn't want a full functional device he just wants to have the data so we only swap the NAND and uh, the CPU and taking the logic EEPROM data because it's only for data rescue so let's get out the board and start Taking out the screws quickly, like meeting and Andy's mother quickly. In some cases, cases it's really necessary to to meet her behind the supermarket. Um, just having about five minutes and just go away. So, enough of of fun. Because now we just start by taking out that board. And don't think about repairing a board which has 12 volt. Because like I said, you, you, you get from, from one point to the other, it doesn't make any sense. Okay, let's start by just taking out the EMI shield on the front. Andy is just mounting the third bruiser and um, I think he should be done against 4 o'clock. He's just mounting the extruder and he says it's really hard work to mount it. So we just get the EMI shield out. Slightly with the hot air, just waiting a short time. We work without preheat in, the, in that case, so it just takes a little bit more of time. But that's not a problem at all. Oh, and I work with really less airflow. So that's the cause why it, it takes such a long time. 
but I don't want to change it now. So I just wait until I get it up. No, I don't wait. That's just too long. So, and now we are here. And now we just take out the clue. Jobs like this I really just love. I really like them. Um, A10 and A11 swap works. And it's my last one on YouTube. I said it on the on the last two, but not to you, only to Andy. I said, "Oh, Andy, I had I, I done so many swaps now. That's the last one." But um, today, the last swap, which I show on YouTube. Have a lot of fun with that. Tomorrow we have uh, Oktoberfest. What's October in English? Oktoberfest. Okay. It's an international name. Okay. So tomorrow in the morning we meet here with some friends and all the workers of Apfel Doctor. And we just. And we just drink some beers, <laughs> like, like every day you will say, but no, um, we just drink some, some Weizen beer and eat some, and eat some Weißwürste with, pre with Priesels. Ilya comes from, uh, he lived in Munich, so I think he knows the Oktoberfest. I wasn't quite a visitor. It's not really a thing. Yeah, mine, mine not too. <laughs> but here at Apfeldoktor, it's really nice. Because you can, can work while you have Oktoberfest. <laughs> That's great. So we just take out the CPU. And before we take out, we just need to remove the underfill everywhere. No problem at all. Just need to remove it here. And here. And everywhere. After that I just get out the NAND first and then we get out the CPU because we are just on that side now. Okay, here we have to cover on the end just a, a little bit, but that's not a problem at all. 
and now we can take out the CPU here. Just take a bigger nozzle. my tool we are done unfortunately two of these ground caps um, are on the board but that's not a problem at all it works fine without them so next step is just cleaning just cleaning the CPU Here we lost some ground, not a problem at all. <coughs> so normally the best is if we, if we lose nothing no pad and nine of ten cases i really lose no pads sometimes i lose some but normally if it's just ground it's not a problem at all First take, now the second.
Okay. Now we just take a brush and you see it's like magic. Because we are just clean here. So I just took away the rest of the caps because that doesn't make any sense to keep two and the rest is away. Then we just seal the pads. And use the UV light. Seal it. While that, I just clean the end. Okay, and like I said, here we have to seal with UV. At some points, no problem at all. It's really necessary to do that. Don't get any connections between ground and pads. seal and while that seals we just reball the CPU just want to clean it one more time again from the top side the edges Um, do we have some toilet paper here? Oh, I can. I I try to use that one. Okay. Hope that it works with that exactly like with the toilet paper. Okay. So we need a stencil for a ten. Looking good. Where 
is my tool for getting on here paste Andy, did you forget how to mount the extruder? wipe cleaning the surface using my tweezer and just reballing that CPU Circle, 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 circle to don't get any bent. And then go fast. So now we have to use some flux in the areas where we see that it just didn't connect. And that's quite okay. Waiting a short time for cooling down. Okay. Just one more sticking at the stencil like I saw but only one here that one is sticking at the stencil and I want to get it down Now we should see a perfect reboil of the CPU. Okay, let's have a look. This looks good so far. So now, before just doing the reflow, clean it one time so okay 
it's not a problem at all. What we have missing there is just crown, I just control. So, seven plus intel, are we all right? Seven plus intel here. Yeah, that is all crowned. Do you see D3 here? Crowned? Not a problem at all, and the rest is all there, just perfect. So, let's get on some flux. Blasted. Great, great reball, like you see. Okay, so lay to the side and take the NAND. And getting the NAND rebolt. Okay, great, it's done. And now we can just copy the data. And I hope it works without swapping the ROMs. Plan our moment. Ab und zu muss ich dich ja testen, ne? From time to time I have to test. <laughs> okay. And so, logic, okay, it's not detected, it's no problem, I just clean. Just clean the board one time. fast. I try to get out data here, but it says the same. Okay, so that I wanted to test before, because when it doesn't recognize the EEPROM here, it's not necessary for me to clean here, because I just swapped the EEPROM makes more sense for me. So, at first I take it out here. logic EEPROM on the 7 plus normally here like on the 7 
So this one we don't need because it's out of our swap board. So we have some pads here, that's okay. So that one is the one we need, so don't waste it, because otherwise data are gone. using some flux and get it down here exactly the same way get it on here baby come on okay And it's done. Okay, we swapped the logic ROM. Now just having a look. Yeah, and now it's just detected right away. That's good. So we can now just get on the CPU and before we get on the CPU we get on the NAND. Just some, oh, here's the old one. Just some flux on, taking the So, NAND is in. Great. So now we just have to to clean here. So we really have a clean surface and no no dirt, not at all. Great. That's clean. That's okay. So we only have to get down the CPU now. Just want to take one photo. Okay, done. Having a look if the CPU is clean, and it is, and if it's clean, we can get it down directly on the board without using flux because we have flux on the CPU.
Okay. That's nice. And now we can just solder down. As soon as we see that the flux is coming out, we know that CPU sits right, well connected and we should be done. Okay, that was all. CPU sits down, we don't need the baseband CPU because it's data rescue only job. cooling down a little bit and after that we can just check so I just want to check for the value on power supply looks for me like a boot that's nice so we can get on oh no we don't have a lcd connector on that board <laughs> <laughs> i claimed it but it's a boot it's just it's a boot okay i will just replace that lcd connector oh that's bad that's bad that's the the thing when you always take things from boards you see that that's so bad now because we had a great time for the swap and now it's just time wasting ah oh, that's bad Andy really because now I have to get on the LCD connector but I can take it from that uh, from that banner board here and I will try to do it fast Did you do the um, the quotation audio I see? Smartphone fix yeah. uh, 119. Yeah. yeah, okay, that's good. It's done? But almost the extruder. I only ma I only mean the extruder. So I just have to take out the FPC now. done within 30 minutes or 35 minutes and now we are just need more t we just need more time or I need more time because I didn't saw that we have no LCD connector on the swap board great fucks me up a little bit so I hope this connector will work Now I have to use preheat on a fresh soldered down CPU. Don't like that too. But I need to for the 
for the FPC. I think I can't use that FPC. I try to. That's really bad. No, I, I won't take it. Time wasting shit, really. So bad. That's so bad. would be done in such a great time and now it's just it's just like a boom in my head because I have to get out another LCD FPC out of another board I don't have a new one here and the first one was not okay. Okay, this one is good. This one is good, I think. Now just get it down here. and hoping that it works directly on the point. <sighs> Waiting for the hot air. So we have just to get in the FPC now. Come on, go over here. Okay, I think it looks good. Having a look here. Yeah, looks great. Just cooling down a little bit. This side looks good too. So, now we are really in the position to test. Okay. And I connect the ambient light sensor before I do the test so the screen is lighty enough. And boom! We are back to life again. iPhone 7 Plus. Ford swap after 12 volt. Over volt.
And boom, it was nice, yeah. So, on power supply all is nice. The values are right. I can't say if I get a haptical feedback because I doesn't have the phone here. But you see, it just works. We have searching because we have no baseband CPU on that board, but we have all the important data on the phone. The home button works and the swap was successful again. iPhone 7 Plus board swap just within 45 minutes because I had to transplant an LCD connector because it wasn't on the swap board. Okay, I claimed it before. I hope you liked that video. If you want to learn things like that, you can easily do that at a Bottle Lab Repair School Germany. If you're working in the repair industry for smartphones and tablets, you can just join our Facebook group, answer the questions, otherwise we won't accept you. I hope you liked the video. I think um, I'm the first who did so many swap videos on YouTube uh, in real time and no fake and all works 100%, okay? Here, great. I'm out. Boom! Back to life again. Yours, Ben.